Good morning, this is Alan Johnson here from Piranha Off-Road Products and today we're going to be putting a dual battery system in Simon's brand new Nissan. Now as with most dual battery systems, normally they live in the engine bay and this would be a typical tray for a Nissan Patrol. The tray is designed to follow the contours of the guard and it fits at the back passenger side corner. However, in this particular car, this is a 4.8 petrol and it has ABS brakes. We cannot fit the battery into the normal position in the engine bay. So consequently, that means we don't have the choice of batteries that we'd normally have, like wet cell deep cycles. We're going to have to go to a fully sealed AGM battery in the back. We're going to go to an isolator in the engine bay and we're going to set this whole thing up for you now. So what I'd like to do is take you for a walk around the car and show you how it's all going to happen. Here we are at the back of the car. Now, normally, you don't always have these wonderful drawer systems, but this is a particularly good application. We have a nice little hole here, and this particular battery is gonna fit like perfection. Have a look at this. We can put that sealed battery down in there. We can put the lid back up on top, and we'll have a whole dual battery system now contained in here with the starting system in the start of the front of the car, the auxiliary battery here. So we'll have plugs and sockets for running our fridge. We'll have a battery monitor on the dash of the car so Simon can see what's happening in both the main and the auxiliary battery. We can see the specific voltages. And of course, we'll have the isolator in the engine bay where it can keep tabs on what's happening in both charging systems. So we're gonna start putting it all together for you now. Okay, we've found a level spot to mount the isolator to allow enough clearance for the bonnet strut. A lot of people make that mistake where the bonnet strut actually hits the unit, so just be very careful there. Next, we're going to earth the unit. A lot of people, when they earth the unit, they put it under the mounting screw, which is on top of plastic, which is not the correct way of doing it. You need to find a nice earthing point, preferably a captive nut, and then you can clear the paint off, put a terminal on it, screw it on, and you've got a great earth. Okay, all our cables we run in the conduit, which is a convoluted split tubing, just to give it a bit of extra insulation value. So in case it rubs through on anywhere, it won't hit the copper cable and cause a short. Okay, we're connecting power to the ignition sense wire, so we have to find it a good ignition supply. Most of the time we run it to the wiper motor because it's a nice ignition power source. The next step is to connect up the main battery cable. Okay, we've mounted the fuse box up here. We've allowed enough clearance to get the wires around so it doesn't rub on the bonnet. We will then run the cable around following the existing battery cable and connect it up to the isolator. Normally this would go to the battery positive, but because we're putting the battery in the back of the car, it has to go to the isolator. So we'll strip it and solder it into the isolator and that gives us power supply to the fuse box, which then supplies fused power to all your accessories. We're going to put the battery monitor in about there with double-sided Velcro. The purpose of the battery monitor is to tell you the condition and the charge rate of both batteries. Okay, to get through the back quarter panel, we use a bit of yellow tongue. And we'll just poke that up through, follow the existing wiring makes it a lot easier than pulling all the drawer system out. So we'll put two holes through here with the step drill. Okay, once the battery tray is bolted in, we put the battery in and we clamp the battery down with a, a good clamp so it's nice and solid to stop any vibration. Well guys, it's finished. Batteries installed, plugs and sockets, fuse box, everything's done. Simon is now ready to rock and roll. He should have a great time. Now this dual battery system is capable of doing quite a bit of stuff, but remember it is only one auxiliary battery. In many vehicles we can actually do two auxiliary batteries for running even more gear again, but it should be fun. So I'll see you in the bush guys. Cheers.